to talk about living a life of intentionality. And today I'm going to be sharing with you uh, how we're getting ready for our first year of homeschool preschool. I cannot believe that it's here. We are so excited that it's finally here. We've been preparing for it. Uh, Samson is super excited. We are super excited. And it's just going to be a blast. So I'm going to be sharing what I did this summer, um, what things I read to get my heart and my mind ready and prepared for this special time and um, our curriculum choices for this year for um, the preschool. And then also I'm gonna be sharing kind of my, what I have left to do. We have, we are gonna be starting in four days. So what's left on my to-do list. And then um, I'm also gonna be sharing kind of a little bit of my organization. So if you are interested in seeing what a mom of a three-year-old and a currently 14-month-old um, is doing in her home for preschool and even taught school, then keep on watching. For those of you who may um, just be joining and um, don't follow me over on Instagram, which if you don't, that is a great place to keep up with our homeschool journey and just what we're up to. Uh, you can look, you can find me at, at Full Flourishing. And uh, yeah, I just share a lot of stuff, sometimes in my story, sometimes in the posts. But anyways, in case you are new, uh, I have a three-year-old son named Samson and a 14-month-old son named Jericho. And I did taught school with Samson, um, you know, up until now. And um, it wasn't, I didn't do, like, it wasn't rigid at all. In fact, most of anything we do isn't like this rigid ritual um, type thing, but it was purposeful. So I would purposely look for things that Samson was interested in and um, kind of develop like materials or um, just make sure to spend time on things, um, helping him to explore things that he's showing interest in. So I have written two posts in the past on um, kind of my philosophy of taught school because I uh, shared where our first two kind of um, like themes of taught school were with Samson. So the first one was farm themed, mostly because those are the materials that I had access to already and I didn't have to go out and buy or make anything. And then the second one was something that was much more geared towards his interest, which was construction. So if you know him, you know, yeah, like, yeah, of course it's construction, but, um, I will link those two below just so you can kind of see how I structured it and, and everything. And hopefully that might help you out if you have a toddler and are looking at taught school, but for preschool before, um, I talk about the things that I read this summer, um, to get my mind and my heart just like centered and ready for this upcoming year. Um, if you haven't already, I did earlier this year post um, a two-part video series on my YouTube channel about um, how we arrived at our philosophy of education, my husband and I, um, the books we read, the blogs we might have come in contact with, the different materials that we've um, that have inspired us, but how we as a family developed our current homeschool philosophy of education, and that is what I would encourage you if you are just starting or just now looking into homeschooling or doing something at home with your children, um, even if it's not homeschool long term, even if it's just preschool and they're here and now until they start kindergarten, um, I would still encourage you to check out that video. Part one is more about the how we arrived at the philosophy of our homeschool education and part two is where I'm sharing um, resources that really have inspired and helped me. So. Anyways, I'll link those below too, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. This video will really just be about how I've been in um, just recently preparing for our homeschool um, semester year. So um, in saying that, the books that I was really looking at this summer, um, I'm still going through um, and rereading when I read books, I like to highlight and I call them like Holly's Cliff Notes because I highlight and underline, I even like mark up the margins so that I don't have to reread my materials because I just don't have time to do that. If I've already spent the time to read it and read it well, then I mark it all up so that I can just flip through it. So if I have like flipped through my old Cliff Noted um, books, but as far as like new material, I bought this book um, and I'll try and link it below. But I bought this book when Samson was still like under a year and it did is it gave me some good like foresight into what I can be working towards. So even if you don't quite have a preschooler, this is a great book to pick up. 
and uh, it doesn't cost very much and you can get it on Amazon but I have been going through this because it is for preschool and it even in the back um, tells you how you can make some of the Montessori materials give some suggestions for making them instead of buying them because if you are interested in the Montessori philosophy of education there um, is a phenomenal Facebook group called Montessori 101 and the women, the mothers who have created this Facebook group also have Instagram accounts, which are even more amazing. And they have blogs, which are amazing. So you should definitely go check them out. Through that group that uh, when I knew I was gonna start um, doing preschool with Samson this year, um, I knew that the direction I wanted to take for uh, math and reading and writing was going to be the Montessori direction. Um, focus. So I immediately went to the Facebook group and I typed in like, you know, math and reading and writing and stuff. And I found that this book was highly suggested and oh my gracious, like it is absolutely just lovely. Um, it's called Montessori Read and Write, A Parent's Guide to Literacy for Children by Lynn Lawrence. And it is phenomenal. And I got this one used and I've just been uh, marking it up and I'm actually not even all the way through it which is um, that is a wonderful resource and lovely material and I would highly recommend it so um, let's see so as far as what I've been reading this summer that's kind of what I've been um, reading and thinking about so I bullet journal and one of the first things I did before I even started doing this curriculum is something that Elsie from uh, Farmhouse Schoolhouse says that she does which is before she ever thinks about like curriculum wise what do I want my children to learn this year or what do they need to learn this year um, first she sits down and she thinks about like character like what about um, my children like in order for them to be able to do this particular thing like do a science experiment totally on their own um, what kind of character traits character qualities what kind of habits do they need to have and possess to be able to even accomplish that task so first she just kind of sits down and looks and thinks about that. And so that's what I did. I sat down and I wrote um, a list of, I think there were like five or six things um, that maybe only like three or, no, I think it was like four or five things. Anyways, a couple of things that I knew would be great or I knew that are needed for Samson this year. Um, there were habits and skills that he needs to be working on this year. And if we didn't learn a single other thing. If he just totally didn't learn anything else, um, if he learned these habits and skills, they would serve him more than any piece of information that he could learn. So I did that for him. I also, also did it for Jericho. And um, I did it for myself too. Uh, goals and habits that I need to be working on um, as the homeschool mom. So if you're interested in hearing, you know, and seeing what that, what those things are, um, you can message me or let me know, and uh, I wouldn't mind sharing them. So after that, um, if you had watched my other videos, my curriculum, um, or my resources video that I was mentioning, part two, I said that we purchased the curriculum, The Homegrown Preschooler, and so I pulled out, one of the first things I did is I pulled out um, the September, October, November, and December, and it comes, it's like in a big fat binder and so I realized like always pulling all my materials out gets really like cumbersome and troublesome so what I did is I just have this smaller notebook which is not finished I don't have like a cute cover or anything on it and I have these tabs and I have just gone through and um, put in you can see it's like not very much but I've gone through and put in the homegrown preschooler stuff for those couple of months and then the other curriculum, and the only other curriculum that we have and that we're going to use, um, is Exploring Nature with Children. Just phenomenal, um, by Lynn Seddon. And I have been wanting to get this curriculum for a while. It's not very expensive, it's $18. And, um, but, like, it's amazing. So I'm a nature girl, I was a Girl Scout, I got my gold award, I love to do primitive camping, I love hiking. But I live in the city, and um, I taught middle school, not preschoolers and, and young children, and I am pretty good, I think, about saying, like, um, about leading my kids in nature. Um, but I just, there's something missing, and it would just be great to have some, like, inspiration, because it can get very, like, 
drab, just going outside. You know, we don't live on like a nature preserve or, you know, buy one that's that close. We'd have to drive at least like 30 minutes and the reality of getting my kids out all the time just isn't a reality. So I wanted something that would kind of inspire me and help me to like just dig in a little deeper. So I thought, well, maybe, maybe this will be a great help. And it's amazing. She has basically taken the whole year and broken it down into the four seasons. And then each season is broken down into a month. And then each month is broken down into a week. And each week you're given something to kind of explore. So for instance, the first week of September is going to be exploring seeds. And that's what we're going to do the whole week. So what's amazing is that she has... Um, even given you a book list of fiction and nonfiction resources. So I went online. This is one of the things I've done in preparation. I went online to my library and also to our university library. Um, and I looked up the books that she suggested and I put them on reserve and today we picked them up. So I have all of our books on reserve for the whole month of September. And I didn't even have to like search them out. I was able to just go to her book list, which is amazing. And then, um, there was like a couple that my library doesn't have and so then I've already ordered them on Amazon. I think just two of them, two used copies. So then she also has a poem for each week. So the first week is a poem by Emily Dickinson and then she also has um, a suggested piece of art. Um, so Charlotte Mason is really big on, um, you know, art study and so that's, what we're that's what we're doing yeah it's great I'm excited instead of thinking like where am I gonna find or what should I do or it was just all together and it kind of goes all together and it's just I'm really excited I was super impressed um, I'm pretty hard to impress with curriculum I'm pretty like judgy of curriculum I guess you could say and I was really excited it doesn't have a lot of fluff there's not like pictures in it or anything there's no fluff it's just like it's great it's so great I just can't sing its praises enough anyways so I have that and it's like a fat section of stuff that you print off. So I've pulled out August through December again and I still need to, this is just the August through December, but I still need to hole punch it and then I'm also going to put it in the same binder with the homegrown preschooler stuff. So then the next thing I did is um, I printed off and if you go to the homegrown preschoolers website, they have like their September um, the month of September they'll let you have for free um, so that you can kind of try it out and see if you like it so anyways I'm gonna kind of like flash it but I basically make a copy of the month of September that way I can just write all over it and then I highlighted the, the actual activities that we're going to do because we don't do every single activity because the homegrown preschooler is formulated for like three through seven and some of them are like reading activities and things that we're not up to yet, or it's things that we're not interested in doing right now, or maybe ever. Um, but what I've done is I've highlighted everything that I'm interested in us doing this month, or that I think is even feasible this month. And then um, I've highlighted the theme and the character trait and the Bible verse, so that that is already. And I can make notes. What I like to do is make notes on the back of it, just leave it blank, so that I have it for the next year if I've added something to it or changed the activity or just so I have notes and I don't start getting like confused. Um, I printed off the portraits, the pictures, the artwork for um, the art study with the Exploring Nature with Children curriculum. So I just need to laminate these pages. I've typed up the poem suggestions and I'm gonna actually just put them on the back of the artwork. I'm gonna put them on the back here and then I'm gonna laminate them and then after we look at the picture and we're reading the poem, we're gonna do that each day, but I have like a little easel, um, like a photo easel on our nature table and we'll set this on the nature table so that when we collect things and bring them in, it's kind of all there. And then the final thing I did as far as organization goes, for myself is I created my own like calendar I guess for the month but what I did is I have um, and I'll do a close-up of this here in a little bit but I did week one two three and four and then I divided it into the categories 
um, that would be most beneficial for me. So I have it divided into um, books, like what poetry books, Bible books, and chapter books um, we are reading, the homegrown preschooler, like what activities we're going to be doing that week or we're going to be trying to do, exploring nature with kids, what um, activities we're going to be doing that month or that week. So the first week says collecting seeds. Um, for reading and writing, I have like what sound games I'm going to be working on. Like we'll be working on the level two sound games that first week. Uh, for math and geography, um, that's the next column I have you know, things listed in there like nature math book or classification cards, things like that. And then I have a music, finger play, hymn and folk song category. And then I have like our adventure. So my hope is that we would take, and we generally do this, but we would take like a weekly adventure somewhere. So if it's just really cold or we have a new baby um, and it's just really hard to get out of the house at least, and we, so we're doing our nature stuff, you know, around the house, at least one day a week, I always try to get us to go somewhere so anyways I'll show you what the front looks like and I have like notes written on it and stuff and I've already kind of filled it in as you can see and then the back I put um, what verse we're gonna be doing for the month what habit or skill we're really gonna be working towards and then I have Spanish and art piece so if there's a Spanish word or a couple of words that we're gonna be doing um, I have that on here and then what art pieces. I have them written down the name and who they're by. And then underneath I have a section that says other and for this month I wrote like our possible daily schedule and our possible weekly schedule that we can kind of adhere to and everything. So anyways, that's about it. Um, I've totally cleaned out our schoolroom. If you are interested in, in taking a tour of our schoolroom and seeing what it looks like, we just totally painted and got it all set up and it's very like nature themed kind of a Waldorf um, feel to it if you're interested in taking a tour I'll also link that video below it's probably one of my favorite things in our house but um, I've take I've taken everything out of that room there's nothing in there except the nature table has stuff on it and I will slowly begin begin to start putting some things um, back on it because stuff was everywhere in the house so currently we have our train tracks and train stuff and then we have our like constructions vehicles and a basket of balls and that's it because I was going crazy so I will slowly begin um, putting some things back on the shelf that are more um, focused on work instead of just play which you know kind of is the same thing but Anyways, that's what we're doing right now, and um, if you are doing something special or different with your preschooler, um, or you're doing something special for taught school, I'd love to hear about it. I always love gleaning ideas from others. I think that's just the best. That's how we learn and grow, is um, just learning together. And that's why I'm making these videos, because I had wished and I looked for someone who was at the beginning of their journey and not just in the middle of it or towards the end of it and telling me how it was in the beginning, but I was looking for someone who had been in the beginning. So I hope that if you are in the beginning of your homeschool journey that this video has helped to you. And my hope is that um, after we do our first week that I'll be able to come back and do another video about how the week went. So if you found this video to be helpful, um, if you will like it, and then also you can hit the subscribe button so you, and make sure you hit the bell so that you can be notified whenever I post new videos. And uh, I hope to see you again soon.